Every team has a dominant trend at gameplay at the right times. Interested in how sandbox game events differ from traditional linear ones. What follows is how I have approached it. I am using quest instead of mission to separate it from military terms on the expectations. It's also more scalable. A special call out to Alex Cox, who helped out this bigger picture a few years ago. The idea of how a game cycles through different features cannot lead to several topics. For this discussion, it LL center around non-linear sandbox experiences. If the conditions are right, the game will introduce new events to the player or remove existing ones to shape the gameplay. World state. The current conditions of the game influence what appears in the game. Some examples of these conditions are quest status, player health, and time of day. The world state is a storage cabinet for all sorts of values. Monitoring this allows the gamete or present the best choices for what appears next. The world state keeps track of what's in the game pantry. State manager. Any number of events or quests can be available at one time. The state manager is the gatekeeper to all these possible events. Binary flag fire. Can this happen right now? Every sandbox game needs a gatekeeper that manages wholesale chunks of the game. The state manager is what's on the menu. For example, when Batman is introduced to the Riddler, it unlocks a batch of Riddler puzzles in Arkham City. Game director, when an event becomes unlocked, it might not be present in the game world. Sometimes you need more than blunt on or off. Consider THIS THE key master allowing only fresh events to appear. Depending on what's recently happened in the game, the game director wants to give you specials. For example, if the player just encountered a robbery, the game director knows not to immediately create a no theft opportunity. Another example could be limiting when Lois Lane appears at the Daily Planet. Only between her work hours 9 and 5 p.m., each event has conditions it must meet before the player is allowed to interact with it. The game checks to see what's going on around the player. World state allows a type of event to appear. State manager then picks the best one for the moment. Game director. Gameplay events. An event can be as grand as a story arc, or as basic as finding if Molotov cop chairs are in a rundown cabin. Working together, the state manager and game director decide what you get to play. Hopefully they pick exactly what you want to write before you know you wanted it. If you don't write you can end up with a satisfying experience. With all the major parts known, you can trace the game loop for handling open world content. Imagine all the game encounters you have experienced and see how they could appear based on these checkpoints. We will look at the full spread of quests activities. Motivation loop details can help you shape your player goals. Other topics such as when events can appear will also be discussed. Other orchestrating game world articles. Prefab Premiere you can find more posts on my website curiosconstructs.com. Each hero in Overwatch must stand on their own in terms of depth. So how does Blizzard add new gameplay features without complicating the development process? In this DD 2017 session, Blizzard's Timothy Ford explains how Overwatch uses the Entity Component System X architecture to create a rich variety of layered gameplay. Ford discusses how this networked simulation works and how it leverages determinism to achieve responsiveness and precision. It was an insightful talk that's definitely still worth watching. So developers should not miss the opportunity to do so now that it's freely available on the official GD YouTube channel. In addition to this presentation, THEGDC Vault and its accompanying YouTube channel offers numerous other free videos, audio recordings, 
and slides from many of the recent game developers' conference events, and the service offers even more members-only content for DD Vault subscribers. Those who purchase all access passes to recent events, like DD, a uh, vertical already have full access to DD Vault, and interested parties can apply for the individual subscription via DD Vault subscription page. Group subscriptions are also available. Game-related schools and development studios who sign up for DD Vault Studio subscriptions can receive access for their entire office or company by contacting staff via THGDC Vault Group subscription page. Finally, current subscribers with access issues can contact DD Vault Technical Support. Storytelling and world building are important tools game makers have at their disposal, but sometimes only have limited space or assets to build out either. During the Game Developers Conference in San Francisco this week, King's narrative design lady did just just that and offered some advice on how narrative designers can work within those limitations to increase engagement and reduce friction with as few words as possible. If you are curious about what King, the studio behind the game Candy Crush Saga, has to offer on the topic of narrative, you are not alone. John opens the early moments of her talk with that exact same thought. People wonder, how does Candy Crush have narrative design? It's a question John discovered Candy C.O.U.S.H.S. players were asking as well. She shares an image of a survey king, conducted with 900 or so members of its BLAYRBASC and highlights that 14% wanted characters and roles introduced in-game and 12% all around wanted more of the story in their Candy Crush games. But, as John points out, Candy Crush does have an established cast of characters under cohesive narrative throughout. So the question becomes how does the narrative design need to adapt to make that information more readily apparent to players. On top of that, mobile players tend to skim and quickly tap through prompts, rather than read every word of text that pops up. If players really do not want to read, but want more story, how do we give them more? John offers up four guidelines to help narrative designers ensure they are getting the most out of the resources they have. Context, clarity, consistency, and charm. They are fairly straightforward but still important for narrative designers to keep in mind. Context gives designers a way to make mechanics and events match with the world and characters. John says this means not making assumptions about what players will understand, considering flow and pacing at every turn, and remembering the usefulness of visual cues and strong copy. Clarity ensures that narrative elements are presented in a simple and succinct way, and John says this boils down to being sure to give the right information at the right time and to not feel the need to have to E-X-P-L-A-I-N-E-V-E-L-Y-T-H-I-N-G. If you can explain something visually instead of with text, do it. Consistency tasks developers with establishing, documenting, and sticking to your narrative elements introduced in the game. Players will pick up when something seems out of character or unusual for the world. John says, that she and the localization team keep a Bible file. This reason that's huge and it takes forever to load, but is awesome for keeping narrative consistent across different games and even across localizations. She offers some tips for keeping things consistent like making sure the visuals and text match the game world, choosing the player's point of view up front, and deciding on and documenting a lexicon and nomenclature up front. Charm is something the characters and examples John brought during her talk seem to use, and something that can be difficult to project when working with limited resources. 
Fa can the crash sock up. Chang wanted to give players an unobtrusive way to give more personality to characters, but had to do so without any additional art. The solution was to scatter existing characters across the map and let players tap to use small blurbs that offered a mission hints, a light background, visual gags can be a great way to carry it um, into a mobile game, with the added bonus that there's not text to localize down the road. It's important, she says, to test your ideas and jokes, but narrative designers and writers need to know when to kill their darlings. However, those four elements are at odds with one another and narrative. Designers have to ignore one guideline to satisfy another. There's no easy answer, or even a right, or wrong answer.